the Mercy One Studio. Support for Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio provided in part by Imogene Ingredients. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. It's time to hear from the top Christian litigators in the nation who have come forward to tell us the truth and help us defend our faith. Hear ye, hear ye. All rise. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Menno, is in session. And good morning, everybody, from the Mercy One Studios in West Des Moines. I wanted to start off with a little bit of a sad note this morning. Uh, That's about my friend, uh, Father Dan Gaylor, who just passed away yesterday. Um, Unfortunately, um, he left behind a lot of people who loved him and trusted in him. Uh, Dan and I go back many years. He was in my diaconate class, studied to become a permanent deacon. For the four years we were together, the... Thirteen of us in that class bonded very well, um, and we got to know one another very well. Uh, We were all ordained together. Shortly after our ordination, Dan decided he wanted to continue his trip and to go into the priesthood, and he entered the seminary five years ago. He was ordained a priest. I was privileged to be at his first Mass, and uh, unfortunately, yesterday, very unexpectedly, he passed away. So uh, I want to send out our, our prayers uh, and thoughts to all of those uh, who knew Dan and who were in his the parishes that he served. Um, Dan Gaylor was a good, good man, and um, we're certainly all going to miss him. The diocese is going to be a little a little less whole uh, without Dan. A couple other things, and I should say good morning to Gina. I'm kind of ignoring her here while I'm talking about Dan. Well, it's a sad thing. I know it you is. were very close to him, and... Um, uh, the, he served our rural parishes, which is a beautiful way to be of service to our right. Saint church Joseph family. in Erling, Saint Peter in Defiance, and Saint Michael in Harlan, where he yes. was serving. Yeah, and that's what he wanted to do. He told to me one time that he wanted he wanted to serve small parishes out in the rural area. I love when um, a priest knows his calling mm-hmm. and um, God provides a way. That's right. That's, That's right. nice. Well, we will miss him. But we do have some breaking news for you right now. The Supreme Court, within the last hour, handed down the two final decisions of the term. Uh, one of them had to deal with voting restrictions in Arizona. Um, the restrictions uh, uh, took uh, said that out of... Um, uh, it, it, what it did is invalidated ballots that were cast in the wrong precinct, and it also banned ballot harvesting. That uh, law was challenged, and it was upheld by a 6-3 to three vote this morning in the Supreme Court. So those restrictions, voting restrictions, are valid, and they are still in place. And the big one that, that uh, Gina and I were looking for, because we've covered this a lot on the program, California donor uh, disclosure rule has been overruled by another 6-3 to three vote, the Chief Justice writing that it imposes a burden Uh, on the right of free association. And the donor disclosure law, as uh, you may uh, remember, required uh, certain nonprofits and charitable organizations to provide to the state a list of their major donors. All uh, nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So if if I made a contribution to a... Including political organizations. Right. So if I made a contribution to our church, but someone from California also made a contribution to our church, all the donors from my church would have to be disclosed to the state of California. If they were made in California, if it was something that was raising money in California. Oh, so I'd have to physically be there? Or I thought it included people who... Californians who might contribute to no, it, our it included people as I understood the law. It included people in California who were being solicited in California. Okay, okay, and uh, and uh, it was uh, the Americans for Prosperity and the Thomas More Law Center who were the plaintiffs in that. They prevailed, and it is a good First Amendment free speech ruling. And but the, in both of these cases, the uh, split was six to three, with the conservatives six conservatives cro- uh, controlling, three liberals dissent in each of those cases. And um, so good, good rulings in mm-hmm. terms of um, our um, 
uh, patriotism and the and the rights to vote protected mm -hmm. um, and this Fourth of July holiday coming up. Right, we can celebrate those. Also, one of the, some some of the fewer cases uh, in this term that were uh, down um, ideology. Mm -hmm. ideological lines. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that some of the cases were 9-0. Right. One of the uh, cases we're going to talk about today was the 9-0, the Fulton uh, versus City of P Philadelphia case, which involved, uh, in effect, excluding Catholic charities and others like that from involving themselves with the city in, in uh, placement of foster children because they would not place uh, in gay homes. Right, and, but homes. the ruling was very narrow, the ver and, and so uh, I'm really anxious to hear how that works right. and what and we're happens gonna, next. And we're going to talk to Sarah Perry in just a few minutes, who is a legal fellow, the Mies Center for Legal and Judicial Studies at the Heritage Foundation, about that case and why it is not quite as um, a landmark as we had anticipated. Well, we kind of hope that, that, that they'd use this case to really help us understand religious liberties yeah. under the First Amendment. But it was uh, more on a... I don't want to say a technical thing, but it was technical. They made it very narrow. They did. All Absolutely. Right. you have a prayer to open us up with? I do. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of peace, bring your peace to our violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women, and peace among the nations of this earth. Turn your way of love to those whose hearts and minds are consumed with hatred. Strengthen us all in hope, and give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world where true peace and love reign among the nations and in the hearts of all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Gina. We're going to take about a two-minute break here, and when we come back, we will have Sarah Marshall, or Parshall Perry with us, who is a legal uh, fellow at the Mies Center for Legal and Judicial Studies, talking about that case from Philadelphia. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides tuition assistance for families to send their kids to our Catholic schools and 65% Iowa tax credits for you. Give to ctoiowa.org. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design, and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at bigredq des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for underwriting Christ is the Answer with Father Ricardo and for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Father Ricardo is featured daily at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Confluence Brewing Company is located off the bike trail south of Grays Lake, confluencebrewing.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Faith on Trial provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. Hi, we're back, and we have with us Sarah Parshall. Perry, the legal fellow at the Mies Center for Legal and Judicial Studies at the Heritage Foundation, who we just talked about a few minutes ago. Were your air, uh, ears ringing there, Sarah, when we're talking about you? <laughs> they were not, but they definitely are now. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, I want to talk to you about this uh, Fulton versus the city of Philadelphia case. Um, we were hoping for uh, a little more of a landmark ruling out of that. We didn't quite get it, and uh, for the... Listeners uh, who are um, not following this as closely as we do as attorneys, uh, and for those who ne don't necessarily understand all the legal jargon involved, can you explain what the case was about and why this ruling is not as widespread as we had hoped it would be? Sure, and um, I, I think that's the right classification of what happened in Fulton v. City of Philadelphia. Listen, we are 
always eager to hear a victory about free exercise of religious liberty. But in this instance, the high court had an opportunity to overrule a very bad precedent from 1990 and chose not to do that. So the case is Fulton v. City of Philadelphia. This is about a Catholic social services, a foster agency's uh, religious convictions and where those convictions conflicted with a foster care contract with the city of Philadelphia. So here you have government power butting up against free exercise of religion. The case that I referred to earlier is Employment Division versus Smith. This is a 1990 case, and it is sort of the outlier in Justice Antonin Scalia's panoply of decisions. It is the one time Scalia and I disagreed on what should have been the outcome. But in that case, in Smith, no one had asked the court to review the standard for free exercise decisions. They decided unilaterally and without being prompted to take up a different standard. And ultimately, the decision there was if neutral and generally applicable laws apply to everyone equally, even if they incidentally burden someone with religious convictions, we'll still allow them to stand. Well, the concern was so great, as you know, that it prompted Congress to enact the Religious Freedom Restoration Mm -hmm. Act, and that was in 1993 as a way at the federal level to reinstate what the process had been for evaluating free exercise law prior to Employment Division versus Smith. So in this case, we were really hoping that the court would have an opportunity, and it was the perfect opportunity, where government interflicts with religious liberty over a government policy It was really a perfect opportunity to overrule Employment Division versus Smith. But here's what the court ultimately did. The court decided that in the case of the foster care contract, and in this contract was a non-discrimination provision. And, of course, these are provisions or ordinances that we're hearing a lot about. These are generally provisions not allowing individuals or organizations to discriminate on the basis of LGBTQ identities, right? So we know Jack Phillips at Masterpiece Cake Shop, when he went to the Supreme Court, there was a non-discrimination provision at issue. And here in Fulton, there was also a non-discrimination provision at issue, but it was within a contract. And at that contract, which is required for all 30 foster care agencies in Philadelphia, they had applied the non-discrimination provision to Catholic Social Services and as a result said, we're cutting you off. Well, ultimately, at the Supreme Court level, the justices found in a unanimous decision, nine to zero, that this was a violation of free exercise for Catholic Social Services, but on a very narrow basis and without overruling the Smith case. Now, that basis, I understand that they um, hung their hat on, was the fact that this was not a a rule or a contractual provision that was universally applied because there was an exception in it. Yes, that's exactly it. In fact, using the Smith reasoning, the court said, okay, we're forced to look at whether or not this law is neutral and generally applicable on its face. And because they said there's a provision in this contract that the city can waive whenever it wants, it was not generally applicable. In fact, oral arguments were very interesting with Justices Kavanaugh and Alito point blank saying, you were targeting CFS because of their religious perspective, the fact that there was no same-sex couple that came to foster a child through Catholic Social Services, and there were 29 other agencies ready, willing, and able to foster, indicates from the record that there was some, some hostility. But based on a very narrow factual provision, this contract has a non-applicable or not generally applicable provision based on our reasoning in Smith. The court said we find it to be a violation of the First Amendment. Now, as I read the case, it seems to me that if the city of Philadelphia would just change its contract, it would be legal. Yes, that is, rightly pointed out, a 
concern, a deep concern that we have. In fact, in his blistering dissent, and it was 77 pages long, and Alito mm-hmm. made no, yeah. <laughs> he made no bones about the fact that it, I think he was hoping this would be the majority opinion. It writes like a majority opinion, like I said, 77 pages long. He indicated, listen, it is so easy to change this contractual provision. You may as well have written it on magic paper that disappears because it really is that easy. So now, of course, we are faced with the prospect of what happens when CSS reopens its doors in Philadelphia. We're hopeful that the city has obviously taken the message to heart that it got from the Supreme Court. But we know Jack Phillips and his masterpiece cake shop series of cases is now in court for a third time for a non-discrimination provision. So it would be very easy to modify what we might see coming out of the city of Philadelphia. We're hopeful that won't happen, but it's certainly a possibility. Yeah, Gina? Which would be a terrible shame. Um, The Catholic community in Philadelphia, I saw, has been serving needy children since over 200 years, since the founding of our country, well before the city itself was providing services to the needy children. So that would be a a terrible shame. Um, And this ruling gives no um, help to any other agency that might be suffering the same kinds of problems with their uh, contractual arrangements with the cities. That's exactly it. Now, as the only religious provider, there was another religious provider, but that provider decided they would adhere to the non-discrimination provision on contract and actually dropped out of an interest in this particular case. But only Catholic Social Services stood fast and said, we cannot violate our sincerely held religious convictions because we've been fostering here that particular agency for almost a hundred years and they really did did not feel that they ought to be compelled in order to participate in a government program to violate their religious beliefs. So knowing that there are a total of thirty agencies and perhaps more now that are willing to foster same-sex couples or unmarried couples, two things that the CSS agency was not willing to do, they have multiple choices. If a parent, if a couple wants to foster, they could go anywhere else. And there was no individual who had complained, no couple that had complained about CSS or concerning their inability to foster And in fact, once again, the factual record indicates that there was some patent hostility expressed by the city of Philadelphia. So it's a win, but it is a very narrow win. It didn't achieve Smith's overruling. And we have yet to see whether the city of Philadelphia will go back to the drawing room and rewrite a contract in which CSS is required to participate. Yeah, that that's going to be interesting to watch and see what they do. Um, We, uh, uh, we've been watching this case for a long time, and it started quite a while ago. But you're right, there was a lot of anti-Catholic animus in the uh, communication back and forth between CSS and the city. Yes, absolutely. In fact, to the point where a city official, when Catholic Social Services went to meet with the city and trying to negotiate this to work it out in good faith, the city official told them, you need to, quote, get with the times on gay marriage, end quote. So there was hostility from the start, and I think Justice Kavanaugh and Alito did pick up on that. And there was no uh, particular aggrieved individual or couple who had tried to um, have services. Um, and and I, in fact, most of having 30 different agencies um, says to me that they're serving 30 different kinds of communities. Correct. Uh, the families. Correct. That's exactly it. Right. So uh, unlike the cakes and the floral cases, uh, there's no ag- aggrieved individuals. Or Well, and Catholic Charities had a uh, uh, their own internal uh, operating uh, rule was if somebody came in and asked, uh, they would refer them to uh, uh, another agency that they could handle Correct. them. Yeah, yeah. They were more than responsive, again, which um, it's a victory. We're gratified to see a victory, but we certainly wish it had been a little more outright and making sure that interests not only for CFS are protected, but for providers, for charities who have religious convictions, who act on those religious convictions, are protected when they come up up against government action. And we have yet to see that on a broader context. 
All right, Sarah, we've got to take a quick break right now. Can you stay on for about two minutes? Because I'd like to get, if I can, your reaction to the uh, Americans for Prosperity and the Thomas More Law Center case that was just handed down this morning. Absolutely. All right. We'll be right back after two minutes. You're listening to Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Leonetti in the Morning is provided by Blessman International. Blessman International partners with volunteers and donors to provide sustainable programs for children in South Africa by leading 12-day all-inclusive experiences, sharing the heart of Christ with vulnerable children in South Africa. Teams are forming to do something significant in an African child's life. Learn more at BlessmanInternational.org. Thank you to Blessman International for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming of Catholic Women Now partially provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte. Cindy Schulte on the web at cindyschulte.com, 515-226-2111. Cindy and her team know health insurance. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design, and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at BigRedQ Des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. And we're back. You're listening to Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio. Sharon, thank you, uh, Sharon, thank you for staying over. Or Sher- Sarah, what were they saying? <laughs> Sharon, I, I was all over the <laughs> S's this morning. But anyway, thank you for staying over uh, to give us your gut reaction here to these two cases that just came down. The first one, the one that I, the last one that actually came down, but the one I think we were more concerned about than the other is the Americans for Prosperity and the Thomas More mm-hmm. Law Center, which is the donor uh, disclosure case. This is, a, this is a tremendous victory. I, it was also handed down. There were just two opinions that we were waiting for, um, Brnovich versus DNC, which upheld voter laws in the mm-hmm. state of Arizona and is a tremendous win for state-level efforts to be able to pass these election integrity bills. And in fact, I think some of us are believing that the Department of Justice's lawsuit against the state of Georgia has probably just heard its death now. So yeah. that was one of I, the cases. I, but I think you're right. Yeah. This is a, a federalism issue. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is. And Americans for Prosperity versus Bonta, who's the attorney general of California, was consolidated with another case for Thomas Moore Law Center. And these were charitable organizations who were obviously seeking donations in California, but according to the Attorney General's provision, his policy, they had to disclose the identities of major donors with the state AG's office. Now, the state says this information was readily available, and it furthered the state's interest in policing misconduct by charities, And the charities naturally answered with, listen, this is compelled speech. We don't want to have to violate the First Amendment and our freedom of association to reveal to you donors who would prefer to stay private and anonymous. So each of the petitioners brought suit against the Attorney General. The Supreme Court handed down a victory. Traditionally, we would expect in a freedom of association and a free speech case like this, the justices in the liberal bloc to have dissented, and that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. Hagen, Breyer, and Sotomayor dissented. But the opinion here was very encouraging for us. And in this case, indicating that it might possibly be willing to just fully commit itself to previous precedent, what's known as stare decisis. Mm -hmm. It referenced a court uh, decision, NAACP, versus Alabama, Exrell Patterson. And in that case, ultimately, it 
set up a standard of review for what's called compelled disclosure of affiliation. Well, for people who want to maintain the privacy rights that that freedom of association affords them, the Supreme Court said, we're not going to overrule NAACP. In fact, we're going to use it and say that here in this First Amendment free speech and free association case, we actually find the government's interest to be too broad. It is not, as we require by the First Amendment, narrowly tailored to further a compelling state interest. And so both of these charities came out winning, and it is a tremendous victory, not only for conservative organizations who are nonprofits, and I know you and I both know right. quite a number of them, but also for the First Amendment overall. And they've had two good rulings on the First right. Amendment. The, the donor disclosure law, the um, uh, Chief Justice said, uh, imposes a burden on the right of free association. Yes, it does. Sarah, I want to yes, thank you does. for joining us today. We certainly appreciate your uh, quick analysis of the last two cases that just came sure. down within the hour. Certainly appreciate it. We'll have you back again. Nice Thanks talking so to much. you. Thank you Thank you very you much. Too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. We'll be right back. Yeah, we will be right with, back uh, with... Faith on trial. Our, and our final prayer. Yes. All right. I guess we won't be back. We're not well, leaving. <laughs> oh, well, we have this new half an hour format, and uh, we're not we're getting, working out the We're breaks getting yet, you, yes. used to it. Okay. Well, uh, I, interesting cases that have come down from the Supreme Court. I'm wondering how they'll affect some of the uh, cases that are in the lower courts right now. Well, we know quite a obviously few of them. they will, because the, the Supreme Court is the precedent maker. Well, so, yeah. except for Fulton versus uh, the city of Philadelphia. That, it sounds to me like it won't have much they, of an effect. What they did is they followed a precedent and didn't overrule one. That was the problem there Okay, with that uh, employment law case. All right. Well, All so, right. Wanted, so, to, wanted to mention that starting next Friday, Man Up West Power Lunches are going to start up again, and that's at noon on July 9th, be the first one back. Let's end with prayer right now. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. For Gene and myself, thank you for listening. Join us next week for another edition of Faith on Trial. Until then, have a blessed and peaceful week. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Mano. Faith on Trial, Thursdays at 10 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio, iowacatholicradio.com, and the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Support for Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio provided in part by Imaging Ingredients.